네, 여러분 반갑습니다. 저는 어, 한국의 고성용 합성 다이아몬드의 시장 동향이라는 주제로 Hello, my name is k y u n s o n g o n from the w o r g o k c h u l i Research Center. I'd like to speak on the topic of laboratory grown diamond market in Korea. Uh, to begin with, let me briefly explain about the w o r g o k c h u l i Foundation and its research center. Uh, the w o r g o k c h u l i Foundation is committed to the development of Korea j e w e l r y industry. It's a non-profit organization uh, founded by Mr. Lee j e h o chairman of Lee Gold. It was established in 2009 and has invested, in, uh, invested much money in the educational scholarship, research, academic programs, as well as the welfare projects. And also we provide uh, up-to-date information to the jewelry industry and the workers in there. So now let me start the presentation. First, we will look at the overview of the recent Korea jewelry and natural diamond market. And on the distribution trends of the synthetic diamonds and their jewelry in global and Korea market, consumer awareness and the purchasing trend. And finally, the industry response and future prospects. Uh, due to the time constraint, I will not uh, mention the definition of the synthetic diamonds. But please note that in accordance with the international organizations virtually, recommendations of ISO, CIB, ZEO, and the FCTC of the United States, the terminology is unified as laboratory grown diamond and gem quality synthetic diamond. Okay, let's first take a look at the Korean jewelry market. Okay, as you know, the pandemic started last year. As of 2020, the size of the Korean jewelry market was $4.9 billion. According to the Euromonitor, Korea's market share is not that high compared to the global jewelry market size, which is about $208.6 billion in 2020. But in Asia, Korea is the third largest market after China and Japan, and it is within the 10th in the world market. Despite the pandemic that started in early 2020, the size of the Korean domestic jewelry market has hardly decreased. However, it appears to be declining after its peak in 2016. Let's have a closer look. Uh, we can say that the Korea jewelry market is divided into two categories, which are non-wedding jewelry and wedding jewelry markets. Compared to the previous year, the non-wedding jewelry market increased by 0.6%, and the wedding jewelry market decreased by 9.5% compared to 2018. What are the reasons? Let's consider one by one. Uh, the first reason seems to be a sharp decrease in the marriageable demographics. The number of married couples has decreased by about 70,000 couples over the last 10 years. As a result, the wedding jewelry market decreased about 406, uh, 400 million US dollars. Naturally, the wedding jewelry market is also expected to diminish due to this kind of decrease. The second factor is that the new consumers called millennials or Generation Z are exercising greater power. As seen in the jewelry buying share by age group, in the past 10 years, those in their 20s and 30s have already been influential in the jewelry consumption market. And the third reason is the growth of luxury jewelry market in Korea. According to the Korea International Trade Association, the import of jewelry products has been steadily increasing over the past decade. 
Since 2013, the gap between Joli import and export deficit has widened. Over the same period, Joli exports have increased by 2.1 percent, while imports have increased by 220 percent. In particular, the sales of three major luxury brands have grown by 258 to 327 percent over the past decades. And finally, the fourth factor is the growth of the online market. According to the recent survey result, the size of online jewelry sales increased by 10.2% and the purchase rate was 15.9%. Uh, in particular, this rate was the highest compared to the previous surveys. Now, the purchase rate of online shopping malls have exceeded that of department stores or offline shopping malls. As you can see, the Korean jewelry market is changing to meet the needs of the consumers. Let's recap the four reasons again. First, the trend of declining jewelry consumption market due to the decrease of the marriage population. Second, the widening influence of the newcomers called the Millenniums and Generation Z. The third one is the expansion of the luxury jewelry market. And lastly, the changes in the distribution market, including especially the online market. Uh, now let's move on to the distribution status of the Korea synthetic diamond market. Uh, let's take a look at the status of the global laboratory grown diamond and the natural diamond market. Currently, natural diamond production is declining by an average of 5% per year due to the aging and depletion of mines. Uh, especially last year, due to the pandemic, the production of natural diamond was 111 million carats, which is a decrease by 20 percent compared to the previous year. And experts say over the next 30 years, production will decrease by 65 percent or up to 90 percent. But as you all know, uh, the demand was really low in the beginning, but the demand for laboratory-grown diamond has been steadily increasing in the global diamond market, diamond market. As of 2023, it will account for 3 to 4 percent of the, of the entire diamond, diamond market and will grow to $15 billion by 2035. Yes, the production of gem quality, laboratory grown diamond is on the rise in quantitative terms. Last year alone, 600 to 700 million carats were produced mainly in China, India, and the United States. In particular, with the development of the technology, high quality synthetic diamonds are being mass produced and flowing into the consumer market. And how does this affect the market price? According to the Global Diamond Industry 2021 announced by Antwerp World Diamond Center and Bain & Company, the price of laboratory-grown diamond has steadily declined in the market. The wholesale price fell down by 20 percent, and its retail price uh, declined by 35 percent compared to the natural diamonds price respectively. Uh, in line with this trend, more and more large jewelry companies uh, choose the laboratory-grown diamond as their new products. De Beers, which is the world's largest diamond specialist, is investing a brand called Lightbox. Pandora and Swarovski are actively and aggressively engaging in the pro product development and marketing activities. In particular, De Beers intends to dominate the synthetic diamond market, while at the same time protecting the natural diamond market. Yes, these companies are developing and selling products with advanced production technology and price competitiveness.
Now, let's take a look at the Korean synthetic diode market for Julie. Mainly the market trends, consumer awareness, and the distribution trends of the laboratory grown diamonds for Julie. Um, recently, Korea's laboratory grown diamonds imports have been increasing rapidly uh, at an average annual rate of 93% over the past four years. In the first half of this year, uh, the record already exceeded 3 million US dollars, and it will be broken again shortly. Moreover, considering that the significant unofficial imports, we believe that the total import of the synthetic diamonds will be even greater. But here's a reference for the laboratory grown diamonds trading volume. In 2017, international, uh, intentional mixing of Malay size synthetic diamonds with natural Malay diamonds created a big problem in the Korea diamond market. At that time, the Seoul Jewelry Center's lab promptly introduced the diamond ident identification equipment and provided a free identification service. Since that instant, over 1.3 million diamonds were identified, and over 17,000 synthetic diamonds were detected. Mm. Uh, even though that incident was well handled, we need to keep an eye on this problem. Um, currently, Mali laboratory grown diamonds account for more than 75% by the volume in the Korean market. 0 0.1 to 1 carat diamonds make up about 20%, and 1 carat or more make up 5%. And recently, the consumption of diamonds with a grading report from 0 0.3 carat to carat plus has been decreasing. And now let's have a look at the synthetic diamonds price. The price in Korea has been steadily declining. Let's say the natural diamond is 100%, then the wholesale price of the synthetic diamond is only 32%, and the retail price is 51%. Yes, the affordable price is the strongest advantage of the synthetic diamond. And experts predict that demand will increase when the wholesale price drops down to 20% level. Um, recently, we surveyed the opinions of experts on synthetic diamonds, and they believe that the synthetic diamonds will account for 22% of the natural diamond jewelry market in the future, and will eventually replace about 35% of the cubic zirconia jewelry market. For your reference, the cubic zirconia jewelry market in Korea, which is not found in other countries, exceeds $1 billion. We believe that synthetic diamonds will soon replace some of these two markets in the near future and eventually become an independent market. Then what's the current market size in Korea? Uh, this year, the size of the domestic synthetic diamond retail market is believed to be $31 million. And the size is about 3.5% of the total diamond jewelry market. However, considering that the market size is rapidly increasing and import volumes and the exports opinion, we believe that in 10 years it's going to grow up to 200 million US dollars. Then what, the, uh, what do consumers think about this kind of uh, synthetic diamond? Uh, we had a consumer survey conducted by uh, Gallup Korea, a specialized research institute, and about 37% of the respondents said they have heard of synthetic diamond. In particular, women and those in their 30s and 40s both exceeded 40%. In another survey of consumers who had already purchased wedding jewelry, uh, the intention to purchase synthetic diamonds for their wedding jewelry was 40.4%. 40, in particular, uh, people in their 20s are the largest potential cons uh, consumers in the wedding market, and they accounted for 46%. 
and these results are much higher than the expectation of the diamond industry. So this market is expected to grow rapidly if marketing and promotions are tailored to the consumer's preference. As I mentioned earlier, millennials and Generation G have exceeded 40% of the consumer population. They enjoy online shopping, they have a high interest in the environmental and la labor issues, and they also have an open and practical consumption mindset. So we believe that they are also very open to buy synthetic diamonds compared to the older generation. Uh, there are three channels for the consumers, uh, which are the jewelry franchise store and specialized sellers and wedding jewelry specialist stores and the e-commerce markets. Uh, these are the main channels that the synthetic diamonds can be uh, accessed by the consumers in the retail markets. Uh, let me briefly uh, repeat again. The channels are jewelry franchise stores, specialized sellers, wedding jewelry sellers, and e-commerce markets. Uh, first of all, there are more than 800 franchise jewelry stores nationwide. They mainly sell fashion jewelry products to young customers. And since last Christmas season, Two jewelry franchise groups started selling fashion jewelry items set with the synthetic diamond in about uh, 300 stores. They emphasize the low, pr low price and offer a variety of gift, gift items and fashion jewelries. And they plan to increase the quantity according to the response of the consumers. Uh, secondly, the specialized jewelry companies that mainly sell the synthetic diamond. Uh, they have professional knowledge and information about this kind of diamond. And the synthetic diamonds are used both for their low price jewelry and high-end jewelry. Although they are not large in number or size, uh, the response from the consumers is quite good. Thirdly, most wedding jewelry companies deal with natural diamond. But recently, some of them recommend synthetic diamond wedding jewelry to budget-conscious consumers. If many young couples become interested in the synthetic diamond wedding jewelry, it can, be, it can bring about a big change in the Korea diamond market in the near future. Uh, the last channel is the e-commerce market. Uh, the synthetic diamonds are also distributed at online platforms. Due to the nature of this market, consumers can be easily misled by misinformation about the synthetic diamond. They, they use wrong expressions such as L diamond or lab diamond, and they sell synthetic diamonds as a natural product or sell it as a similar product. As the online market is growing, we are concerned that the damage to the consumers will also increase. Then how should the Korean jewelry industry view and respond to the synthetic diamond market? Uh, first of all, let's briefly summarize what we have considered so far. Uh, the laboratory crown diamond market will expand with low price, high quality, and various products and distribution channels. Second, the consumption market is expanding, centered on the millennial and Generation G, who are the new purchasing power. Finally, in the near future, they will become an independent market and replace some of the existing jewelry markets. It's going to uh, occupy up to 4% of the total jewelry market. As experts predict, unlike other synthetic gems, the synthetic diamonds will have a significant on the industry as well as the consumer markets. We believe that there are three challenges that the industry has to solve in relation to the synthetic diamond. So we can ask ourselves what are needed for the healthy growth of the domestic diamond and jewelry industry while protecting our consumers. 
First, we need to standardize the confusing terminology because it can cause misunderstanding among consumers and we need to provide a guideline for sound transaction. Second, we need to provide accurate information and education to sales associates and the industry at all levels. Lastly, we need to establish mechanisms in order to monitor and handle any potential dispute. Fortunately, the Korea Jewelry Industry Promotion Foundation, which is now hosting today's conference, established the Korea Diamond Council in January 2020 in order to protect and revitalize the Korean diamond market. Seven related companies, Jolly Association and Research Center, are participating in this concert. Since its establishment, it created a definition and sales guide regulation based on the international standards, such as JSO, CIBJO, and FTC. In addition, the Korea Jewelry Association, which is an organization of retailers, have started operating a consumer protection center related to the synthetic diamonds. They are planning promotions and campaigns targeting consumers and other retailers. We believe that they are going to play a very meaningful role in our future. Yes, now it seems that the Korea synthetic diamond market has passed the introduction stage and has entered the growth stage. So the key is healthy coexistence of the existing market and the new market. We need to protect the existing diamond and jewelry industry and also facilitate the synthetic diamond market as a new business opportunity. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. We also appreciate your speech as well. So we're going to talk about the current Korean like grown diamond market. So there is a question uh, from an international viewer. So, uh, it is well known in Korea lab grown uh, diamond import tax law is quite high. So, what is the view of Korea? Uh, over three different uh, revision of the relevant laws, the tax is uh, lowered than before. So, uh, the, uh, despite the increase of the import volume, the tax burden is not as high as before. So about the recognition of Korean consumers about lab-grown diamond. So the data shows a very high level of the recognition of lab-grown diamond. So compared to the data from other countries, can you tell us the data from other countries? So there is. Uh, we have learned that the consumers in the U.S. or Japan have a similar consumer awareness level as the consumers in Korea. But as we have mentioned earlier. Uh, this type of market is changing very rapidly, so uh, it affects the consumer, the level of the consumer's awareness as well. So the term terminology about regarding the grown diamond. So you had, the center has many plans about the terminology. So there are law uh, connected, related to the terminology standard. 
So when purchase, they consider the purchase of life grown diamond if they have confusion of the status of the diamond. If it is a laboratory grown or natural diamond, it's going to be a big issue. So if, so if there uh, yes, this is quite a serious problem in our new market because it can uh, seriously damage our reliabil reliability among the consumers. And more and more consumers try to buy the synthetic diamond. Uh, thankfully, we have a guideline and there are more movements to deal with this kind of problem or uh, prevent this kind of problem. So we will put more effort to provide more information uh, uh, to the sellers to prevent such kind of problem from re, uh, reoccurring again. Uh, ultimately, we have to create, create an uh, atmosphere where the consumers can uh, totally rely on the sellers of the synthetic diamonds and uh, uh, trust the sellers to tell them exactly what's the difference between the natural diamond and the synthetic diamond and which one of them they are actually buying. So we need to put a constant effort uh, in the coming years. So, uh, lab grown diamond now it is on the market from high end uh, jewelry brand. So, are they a Korean brand or not? Yes, most of them are Korean uh, brands and they have quite uh, well known to the consumers in the domestic market. And uh, the volumes of such uh, jewelry are increasing. And we expect that more and more uh, consumers uh, will, uh, try to, uh, will try to buy this kind of jewelry. Uh, especially the online markets, uh, we have we can find uh, more consumers. From your speech, the brand Pandora or Swarovski, they now they are selling like grown diamond. So are they on the Korean market, diamond market? Uh, uh, to be honest, we do not have any concrete da data in our hands today. But as you know, uh, these days the consumers can buy the foreign products online, which means directly from other countries. But considering the online market movement, we know that more and more consumers are aware of and enjoying these kind of uh, foreign brands. Is there any other questions? So we got a irrelevant, uh, irrelevant uh, question. It is about uh, diamond testing. So is there any standard when Korea uh, <laughs> diamond market when they uh, test for seed of diamond? Uh, in my knowledge, I believe the KS standard is also applicable to the test that you just mentioned. But to be honest, in the Korean uh, diamond and gemstone testing uh, area, there has been a lot of uh, small or big problems that, we, that have been found in recent years. And we still need to uh, introduce the high technology analysis or testing equipment. 
Regarding on the test, uh, grading test, so is there any also uh, er, is there any same standard uh, between synthetic diamond and natural diamond? Uh, recently, more and more uh, gem, uh, gemstone laboratories start to uh, perform the testing for the synthetic uh, diamonds. But we are uh, honestly at the uh, starting or beginning stage. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, some sellers try to deceive the consumers by uh, mixing the Mali diamonds, synthetic Mali diamonds with the natural ones. Uh, that's why we uh, uh, desperately need a very clear and accurate uh, testing uh, standard and testing equipment. So we first need to establish a reliable standard for this kind of testing, in which case we will avoid uh, losing the consumer's reliability. So we should deal with this kind of issues. So really appreciate you shared very important uh, data and information with us.